That is not Bellagio, nor is that. That is Bally's, that is Paris. Both of these spots rumored to both of these spots rumored to be the next location of the WSOP for the year 2022. 2021 WSOP still scheduled to be at the Rio. Next year expected to be over here until I tell you otherwise. For now, bank on that. Uh, speaking of the WSOP, last time I guys saw you, I was in the thick of the online WSOP. Did okay, we had one good score. Mainly, uh, we made the final table of an online WSOP event, finishing in sixth place for $14,000, my best score ever. So pretty happy with that. Uh, I think we had one, one other cash, but nothing else major to report in that regard. Definitely uh, got very busy after that. Uh, life happenings, Boost and I moved into a new building. Downtown Las Vegas, still very much our residence, just in a, a new building down there. Still love it, downtown Las Vegas, Arts District especially. You've heard me talk about that before. I'm not gonna talk about that right now because that, that is the Bellagio. And that is where we're gonna play some poker today. I expect it to be a little bit cooler in there compared to parking garage rooftop in the middle of the desert. Uh, but hopefully the cards are hot. Okay, let's go. In for the max buy-in of $1,500 and getting dealt some good cards right off the bat. There's a player who posted his missed blinds in this hand, which makes the under the gun player go a little bigger with his initial raise. He opens for $50. He's a good player and I expect him to have a solid range here. So even though there's a caller in between, I think a flat call is prudent in this spot. There's another caller and we go four ways to ace, king, seven. It's a good flop for our hand, but still very good for the under the gun range. That player bets $90. The player at my right calls, and we're always calling to, looking to flat call three streets, barring any particularly bad runouts. The turn is a 10. This time, both players check to us. I'm not worried about straights since we have a blocker, and I would expect most two pairs to bet here, so I go for some value with a bet of $200. Both players make the call. The river is a brick, and once again, action checks to me. Seems a little tough to get more value versus a hand like ace jack here, so I'm gonna take it to showdown, and unfortunately, we get shown an unexpected 10-7 suited by the under the gun player. I still think he's a good player, but that solid opening range stuff, taking it all back. All right, upgrading from one queen to two, we open the ladies to $30 from the cutoff. Small blind calls and that same player from the previous hand, three bets to 150. Even though we just got shown a 10-7 from this player, the big blind is just so massively incentivized to call instead of three bet from the big blind that I expect him to not have two merged of a range here. I keep the weaker portion of his range in with a flat call and we go heads up to a flop. It comes down king, king, six, which is gonna be a little bit better for his range than it is for mine. And we see a C bet of 100. I'm always calling here, of course. The turn is a brick and this time he checks. I'm gonna check back here, not needing too much protection from too many hands. The river is a nine and he checks it again. I think we wanna go for some thin value versus ace highs and smaller pairs. With no draws on the flop, I don't think we can have too many bluffs. So I think a small size here makes sense. I bet 110 for about 20% pot, which seems kind of cool. He goes into the tank for a decent while and eventually pays it off. Typically when that happens, rather than a snap call, I think it's likely the bet was pretty close to max value, but maybe there were ways to win more in this hand. Sticking with the theme here, we once again get dealt the pocket queens and make it 30 to go. A few more participants this time, and now we're going six ways to a flop, which is never super comfortable when holding a premium but vulnerable pocket pair. It comes down pretty ragged, eight, five, three, and when there are a couple checks to me, I think we have a clear C bet, I toss out 90 bucks. 
There's one call on my left before the player in the small blind check raises to 300. Once again, this is that same player from the previous two hands. We're sort of left to guess in this spot. He's never overvaluing a hand like ace eight. And while I think he's capable of turning some pairs into semi bluffs, I think it's a tad adventurous. That leaves hands like six, seven sets and two pairs. The good news is that we unblock all the draws. And the bad news is that this was a six way flop. With us having all the sets in our range, I decided to make a cautious fold. The player on my left folds as well. And our opponent is nice enough to show us the 5-3 suited for a flopped two pair. Feels pretty good, man. Good hand, good hand. You're gonna have to wait one hand. I, it's not like him though. He's racking up. Okay. I'll In this hand, we get dealt the same 5-3 suited. And I'm starting to wonder, is Jamin Burton right about this hand? I look down at a hand that's destined to win heaps. Heaps. The 3-5 suited. There's a raise and a call, and we're going to find out for ourselves. I make the call and immediately get punished when the button puts in a 3-bet. However, there's a cold call out of the blinds, and the two players on my right call as well, giving us pretty sweet odds. Terrible reverse implied odds, but those are just words. I call. The flop gives us a pair, but with three diamonds out there, I'm thinking about unsubbing from Jamin's channel. This is all his fault, after all. The flop checks through, and what do you know? The turn gives us trips. The big blind looks like she's debating a bet, and then checks. Checks to me, and we definitely want to bet, so I toss out 220 bucks. The button folds, and only that player in the big blind calls. The river shouldn't change too much, and again, the big blind checks. Trips are a good hand, but with no kicker and three diamonds out there, I'm not sure how much value there is, so I decide to check it back. My opponent shows pocket nines, and not only are we scooping this pot in, but the legend of Jamin Burton and his magical 5-3 suited are officially making the rounds in Vlogland. 3-5 suited never misses. <laughs> Moving off of the must move table and into a main game now, there's an interesting hand here where we find pocket tens under the gun and make it 30 to go. The player on my immediate left makes it 120 and it folds back to me. This is where ranges are the tightest, but being 250 big blinds effective, we're plenty deep to go set mining, so I make the call. And this seems like an amazing time to tell you that favorable apparel hoodies are very much in stock. Ultra comfortable, run good inducing hoodies that you'll absolutely love at the poker table and elsewhere. Favorableapparel.com. Okay, back to these pocket tens and the flop does not improve us while also containing an overcard to our pair. I check it and my opponent bets 90. I like the size and I'm gonna have to peel here for that price. The turn pairs the seven and this time my opponent checks back, which gives me some hope here. The river is a six and we have a decision between checking or putting in the blocker bet. To be honest, I'm not as studied as I could be on the intricacies of when is best exactly to use the blocker bet, but this seems like a reasonable time to do so. I don't want to face a larger bet on the river and have to guess whether or not I'm good. If I bet myself, I can set a reasonable showdown price while maybe even eking out some small value versus ace high hands. I bet 110, same size as when I had the queens in the must move game. This time though, there isn't any value to be found and my opponent lets it go and we're dragging it in. In this hand, a player in early position raises to 40. He's a little shorter with maybe 50 big blinds effective. I think he plays a little on the tighter side, but for his stack size, I'm pretty happy to flip with my ace king suited and see all the cards. I put in the three bet to 120 in the cutoff, but Instead, the button makes the cold call and the early position player folds it. So heads up to a flop out of position of 996 with two diamonds. Most often it seems like these cold calls are middling to good pocket pairs like nines through queens that don't want to four bet and don't want to fold and occasionally ace king. I don't think any of those hands are going to fold. So being out of position, I check and my opponent checks it back. The turn is a good one. It's an offsuit king and now I can bet. Not worried about protecting my hand, I bet $100 and my opponent calls. The river is an offsuit jack 
and I don't see too many hands where I can get multiple streets of value against. And we're also now losing to one of those hands I mentioned earlier. So I decided to check it. This time my opponent bets 300. I expect to chop here a lot of the time, which isn't exactly the best reason to call, but versus a 60% pot size wager, I think it's straightforward. I toss it in and we get shown some bad news as my opponent turns over pocket jacks. I'm not sure how she knew to check back the flop so that I'd hit top pair, then float the turn and then drill the river. But if any of you guys know these skills, I'm definitely open to learning. Got into that poker game for $1,800. Cashed out of that poker game for $2,878. $1,078 uh, to the good. Uh, hello from Yamasushi. I told you guys about another Yamasushi outlet in another vlog, uh, one that was very close to the first place that I lived when I first moved to Las Vegas. There's now three of these in Las Vegas. Can't really uh, be mad at them, can't blame them because a, it's so good, and B, so many people love it. I've never been to this one in particular, but it is banging right now. Okay, uh, officially stuffed, obviously. If you aren't needing to be rolled out of one of these all-you-can-eat sushi spots, did you even go to an all-you-can-eat sushi? Okay guys, tons going on in the very near upcoming future. Uh, this weekend, Houston, if you're looking for a PLO game, get to Houston and uh, come find me. I'll be there on Sunday and Saturday. Um, directly after that, over to Austin, mostly no limit over there, but meetup game variety and uh, should be lots of fun as it always is in Texas. Wow, Ooh. and he puts in the race, oh man. Once that's a wrap, back here, back to Vegas. I'm gonna keep this thing going. Uh, mixing between no limit Hold'em and pot limit Omaha but really looking to crank the bids out once again and looking to get back into the mix on this poker thing and particularly, especially this video thing. Make sure you uh, subscribe to this channel. I would greatly appreciate that. Best way to see all this upcoming content that you guys are definitely gonna love.